Hi everyone, in this short video we're going to take a look at how to place out shape code 15 or a cranked bar across a slab. This is a known issue with Revit but we're going to get around this issue by utilising Dynamo. So let's begin by switching to our level 1 plane and we'll first sketch our cranked bar. So we'll select the host, in this case the slab, we'll select rebar, we simply just get a reminder that the shape definitions will include hooks and in treatments, that's fine. And then on the context ribbon, I'm going to go ahead here and select sketch. When we're sketching a rebar, we need to select the host. So we'll pick the host like so. You'll notice that my bar is a H12. That's fine. I'll just utilize that. OK, and now I'll go ahead and actually sketch the shape I want. So I'm going to make this uh, 500 in that direction. And we'll also sketch it this way, 500 as well. Okay, and then when I click the green tick to finish the edit mode, you'll notice that Revit then creates that rebar. Okay, so obviously now we need to constrain that correctly. So I'll go back into our 3D working view. I'll go ahead and select my bar. We'll use edit constraints. And here I just want to make sure or ensure that it's actually constrained to the cover with a zero offset. OK, so now our bar is in the correct location with regards to the top of the slab, so it's to cover. OK, so let's now go back to the level one plane. Now what we want to do is be able to range this cranked bar across the slab. Now this could be the same thing if you had a cranked ground beam or any type of cranked member. It becomes quite difficult to try and actually do that in Revit. The best we can hope for is most people will try and use the array tool. But of course, the problem with that is that you'll get separate rebars. So if you want to tag it or call it up, then you'll get separate bars rather than the total number in the range. So I'll first show you the Dynamo script working and then we'll go through and actually look at how it's been built up. So first thing I'm going to have to do is actually sketch a model line to represent the vector or the direction of my intended rebar range. Okay, so that's the intended range, like so. And now what we'll do is we'll start up Dynamo Player. And like I say, I'll show you how this is done in Dynamo Player, and then we'll actually open up Dynamo and see how the script was actually created. So when we launch this in Dynamo Player, we need to select Edit Inputs. OK, and then we're prompted here to select the rebar. So if we can go ahead and select that. So that's going to be this one here. And then the vector. Of course, we've already sketched that with the model line. So that's the vector. And now in our intended spacing, I'll set that to 200. And then I simply select play. OK, so you can now see that the range has been created. Notice that we can't really see it on screen. Um, so what we're going to do is use another Dynamo script I've got here, which will view the rebar as a solid. OK, and we'll do that in the 3D view as well. So let's just go into 3D in here. And of course, we can say view as solid. OK, and we have the same rebar set. Now, let's just take a moment to look at this rebar set in a little bit more clarity. So I'll select the rebar set here. And let's review the properties. So in the properties palette, you'll notice here that it has correctly created a range. So in my rebar set, you'll notice we've got a fixed number. Currently, we've got 55 bars. However, it's reporting this as a straight bar. So what you need to do is in the workshop instructions, we'll set this to bend. OK. And you'll then notice that it will detect the shape, which in this case is shape code 15. Now, of course, as soon as it detects that, according to our new 8666-2020 standard, you'll see now that it's filled in the A, B, C and D dimensions for that particular rebar. OK, if we put that into a partition, so let's do that. We'll select our partition. Let's call that slab, for example, in there. And now we'll view our bending schedule. Okay, we can now see, obviously, here we have bar mark 1 for the slab. Uh, we've got 55 in total, and you can see shape code 15, and then, obviously, the various different leg lengths. Okay, and it goes without saying, of course, that we can then go and tag that off if we want to as well. So if I just go and place out a tag over here, this particular tag is showing me the bar mark, but obviously we can change that. So let's actually have this showing the quantities. Okay, so you can see there. Again, we've got 55 bars, H12, bar mark 1. 
Okay, good. So let's just take a closer look at this Dynamo script so you can see how this is actually working. So I'm going to go here and actually edit this in Dynamo. Okay, this is actually using an add-on package, which I'll show you. This is a package called Structural Design, and it's really, really useful. We can actually use this um, as I did in my previous video, which was to create steel framing, or in this example here, we can use it to control reinforcement bar. Okay, so you can now see the script is open. So I'll just close down our Dynamo player. Okay, now obviously the inputs have gone yellow here because uh, there's nothing currently selected within Dynamo. But the key thing to start is you must have this structural design package installed. Okay, and that's easy to get. You can just go to the packages here, do search for a package and just type in structural design. And then we'll be able to actually go ahead and download that. Of course, like any Dynamo package, it's completely free of charge. Okay, let's just show you where that is in the uh, package manager. So I'll just type in the word structural. Okay. Okay, like so. And you can see here we have um, structural design and you can see here it's by uh, Thomas. So it's, as I say, it's a really good package. Now, if I just show you inside the package here and we go into our rebar, you'll notice here that we have this create area. And what I'm actually utilizing here is something called freeform rebar. So if we go to the end here, you can see that the end uh, result here is actually generating freeform rebar. Now, essentially, all it does is we select the rebar shape. So we've got to originally uh, sketch the cranked bar. Then what happens here is we get the properties of that reinforcement bar and I'm actually getting the rebar bar type. So let me just go and pick a bar in here so we can actually see all this working. So perhaps I'll just delete that again and we'll just go ahead and select this uh, from fresh again. So we'll pick the rebar. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and select the vector, which is the model line, like so. And I'll just leave the spacing at 250. I'm going to press F5, which will action that and run it. Okay, and we can now see that we have the rebar set uh, created. So let's now go back into Dynamo, and we can actually now start to have a look at some of the previews as well. So here, you can see that I've selected that cranked bar. What I'm getting out here is simply, in this case, the rebar bar type, okay? And then we're also getting out the host element, which is the floor, yeah, the floor slab. And the reason I've got that is obviously when we create a freeform rebar, it does need that bar type, uh, which is in this case H12, and it would also need the host with a floor. Now, the rest of the script here is then generating the actual shapes. So you can see here that this is taking that same cranked rebar, okay, and what it's actually doing is getting the line work from it. So that's getting the center line curves. We then create a poly curve from that, so it's one element. And then what I'm doing here is I'm also selecting a vector. Now, I've called it a vector, but essentially it's just a direction. And that direction is going to control the extents of the rebar range. Okay, this input down here is controlling the spacing. And you'll notice here that I then get that element geometry, which is, of course, just a line. We get the start point and the end point, which then gives us a vector. Now, once I've actually got a vector, I can use geometry translate. Now, geometry translate is essentially like a copy tool. Okay, and you'll notice then that I'm actually using some code blocks to actually go ahead and get the curve length, which is the length of that line. I'm then rounding that, so I'm not getting silly numbers. And then what's happening here with this code block is I am defining the actual positions of each of those rebars okay, in here. And that's then creating that translated copy. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of these poly curves in here. We then explode those to get separate lines. And of course, that's then finally fed into create freeform rebar, which of course will create that rebar set, okay, as you can see here. Now, a similar technique can be used for anything. So you can actually use this as a container to actually contain rebar. But unlike a normal rebar container, the freeform rebar can be tagged and scheduled and it has much better property sets. A rebar container is uh, quite restrictive in the way that it works. 
Okay, so hopefully that solved that problem for you. As I say, I know it's a known problem, and I've seen it on several uh, forums, and uh, lots of people have posted questions about how do I handle shape code 15. So hopefully that's a good solution to you. Okay, speak to you soon. Take care.